Hello, 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 I'm Steel, and today I'm going to give you a few tips on how to improve your base with immersive engineering. So if you've ever played immersive engineering for the first time, you've probably done something like this. You know, you've spent a lot of time working to make a really nice factory. It's got plenty of space inside it. It's nice and large, very stylish and everything. You just place down your coke oven and your alloy kiln and stuff. You've had to put a capacitor on the side because of your starter windmill and whatever, and you've started stacking up machinery in here. And then things start getting out of control. So first you build your blast furnace, you know, and that's not too bad, you just have to add a bit more wiring to make it work, that's okay. Then you've built your crusher and your metal press, and space is getting a little cramped and the wires are getting a little bit messy, but that's okay, you know, it's nothing major, we can just keep adding stuff in here. Then you added some lights, because it was a little bit dark, and you had to add a transformer so that you could actually link them up together. But now you've kind of run out of space to build more machines. Before too long, you've built enough spaghetti that any Italian would be proud. So, what do you do to prevent this from happening? How can you make sure that you have enough space in your starter factory, or that you can actually keep things tidy around your base? As as you progress through the mod. Tip number one is to actually know what you plan to do before you do it. The, the main issue with this building is that you've simply started by building a factory and then started putting machinery in. Instead, it's best to have a plan of what you actually intend to do. Test out in creative what machines you want to build and how much space you'll need to build them, as well as making sure that you actually know what the building is going to be for. You know, is it going to be a general purpose factory? Is your goal to produce steel? Perhaps you want it to be ore processing. Make sure to try and plan it around that and always always give yourself more space than you think you'll need because that way you can prevent this whole problem just by extending out the factory a bit you know keep some space in there Next, you want to organize your wiring. Hanging it from the ceiling means that it's safe for you and you don't have to worry about being electrocuted to death randomly by your own electricity. It also keeps things tidy. This is far nicer looking than before and it makes it easier to connect up new machines because the relays are already there instead of you having to randomly place ones on the walls everywhere whenever you need to add a new machine. It's still cluttered in here, certainly, but it's a lot nicer. The next tip is that bigger is better. Rather than building one building and just putting one of each machine in it, why not build large buildings filled with multiple of each machine? For example, a diesel power station with multiple diesel generators so you never have to worry about power again, a proper oil processing plant with multiple pump jacks feeding into the refinery towers, a steel mill maybe with more than one blast furnace and perhaps include your coke ovens here as well, and an ore processing facility where you can have crushes and electric furnaces and such. This means that you can have more materials and power being processed at once, and it means that you don't have to worry about space, as well as making switchboarding a bit easier, which I'll explain in the next tip. A switchyard is a great way to manage your power grid as a whole. That way, whenever something is drawing too much power, you can simply disconnect that area instead of having to deal with power cuts throughout your whole base. The best way to do this is with redstone breakers, as these can support high voltage wires, allowing you to not have to worry about upgrading the power lines later on. Uh, Please note that you can't put levers on the redstone breakers themselves, but the way these work is that when they're powered, they disconnect the two sides, so now power will not be transmitted from here to over there, because this is disconnected. This means that you can keep track of how everything's running, and you can make sure that everything keeps going well. This is a great way, especially when you get larger bases and you have massive factories drawing huge amounts of power, to ensure that you don't just cause huge power cuts throughout the whole thing. Here's a proper design for a switchyard. As you can see, we've got a lot more breaker switches in this case, enough for 16 different power lines that can all individually be controlled. These redstone wires here are just used to transfer the redstone signal from a lever that would be at the bottom to the redstone breaker at the top, so you can turn things on and off. Then each wire is actually connected to a current transformer before going onto the power lines. The reason for that is that these allow you to monitor how much power has actually passed over them in the last 2 seconds, or 20 ticks. So as you can see, nothing's connected at the moment, so this has got zero flux per tick transferred across it. But this is a great way to keep track and see what's actually causing all your power drain. As well as this, you actually can build these proper large-scale power lines just like a real power grid. Make sure to keep the lines separated. Don't build, a, for example, don't build wires like this to this. Because now, if I turn off, so you can see these things are connected to these two ones here. But the, way, the fact that they are connected by wire on that side as well means that even if I disconnect this one, it will simply draw power from this side instead, which is a problem. So don't do that. Uh, this is just a nice little design for a power pole that I've come up with that actually uses fluid pipes and metal barrels to 
to build the post of it, which is just an interesting way of doing things, and it does mean that you don't have to bother with, for example, having these things, because they're very low to the ground, as you can see. So building, first of all, having this many power lines on these means you just have to have a bunch of them in a row, which is messy and gross looking, and also they're incredibly low to the ground, which is quite dangerous for high voltage power lines. You want them high up, so that you don't have to worry about running into them by accidentally jumping too high or something, because you will die if you hit these things. My final piece of advice is that once you get to diesel generators, even if you're using crude oil to produce the diesel, it's still worth your while to build bio uh, biodiesel production. That way you can unlock the fancy tools that immersive engineering provides, unless you're in a mod pack where there's an alternative. But these things are absolutely brilliant and will allow you to get all the work that you plan to do done a lot faster. You can mine in a larger area to get more resources, you can chop down whole trees with a single cut, and the weaponry means that you won't have to bother about mobs for a long time. Uh, so that's about it, really. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. There'll be another video on the Brass Mod Pack coming out soon.